I was breaking, uh, breaking different codes and, uh, and data systems and uh, doing data analysis against uh, the Soviet Union. After 9-11, uh, they took one of the programs I would, had done, or the back end part of it, and started to use it to spy on everybody in this country. So and that, that was a program they created called Stellar Wind. That was the separate and compartmented from the regular activity that was ongoing because it was doing domestic spying. All the equipment was coming in, I knew something was happening, but then when my, the uh, contractors I had hired came and told me what, was, what, what they were doing, it was clear where all the hardware was going and what they were using it to do. It was simply a different input. Instead of being foreign, it was domestic input. Somebody told me that they can listen to what we're saying by my having this, even if it's turned off. Yes. Here's the, here's the real grand design. Every domain, think of a domain as an activity, uh, a specific type of activity, phone calls or banking is another domain. So if you think of graphing each domain and then each graph then turning it in the third dimension, the, the trick now is to map through all the domains in that third dimension, pulling together all the attributes that any individual has in every domain so that now I can pull your entire life together from all those domains and map it out and show your entire life over time. I don't because if what you're saying if it was possible it would be revolutionary and people would have a vested interest in preventing that from happening. I'm too old to be afraid. I'm too old. I'm not sure how many of you got a chance to hear uh, Keith Alexander yesterday, the head of the NSA, uh, talk about the NSA's activities. Bill, how do you reconcile, is there some way to reconcile General Alexander's statement that the NSA isn't keeping track of every American with the existence of a facility like the one in Utah? The NSA's charter, and it was a legitimate one, was to do foreign intelligence, and I was with that all the way, and I did the best I could in that job. Unfortunately, they took those programs that I built and turned them on you, and I'm, I'm sorry for that. I didn't intend that, but they did that. What you're describing really is hard to reconcile with the laws as the laws are generally understood by the lawyers who work with them. Uh, most people are familiar with the Webster's definition of intercept. USIT 18 has a different definition, and that's uh, an intercept doesn't take place until it's actually listened to, until somebody puts on, on some earphones or actually reads some text on a screen. So you can pull in all the communications you want. The acquisition isn't the search, uh, the querying later on is the search. They can then keep it in their database and target after the fact by going back and conducting data mining searches afterward, in other words, to get the information that they couldn't target from the outset. And there is another real problem. Uh, <clears throat> unfortunately, the software will, once it takes in data, it will build profiles on everybody in that data. The purpose is to monitor, be able to monitor what people are doing. Um, you, you build social networks for everybody. Uh, that then turns into the graph, and then you index all that data to that graph, which means you can pull out a community. That, that gives the, you the, an outline of the life of everybody in the community. And if you carry it over time from 2001 up, you have that 10 years worth of their life that you could lay out in a timeline. That involves anybody in the country even senators and House of Representatives, all of them. The dangers here are that we fall into something like a totalitarian state like East Germany.
Uh, well, they came in guns drawn, you know, in my house. They didn't do that to the others, but they did to me. I guess, I don't know, they thought I was probably the most dangerous of all, so I don't know. I don't know what was in their minds, okay. So, but they did that, and they, and they came in and pointed a gun at me when I, I was getting out of the shower at the time, so they pointed a gun right at my old head, you know, said, hey. So, <laughs> I wasn't too upset. I just said, uh, yeah, I suppose I could get, a, I could get dressed here. You know, trying to, they weren't intimidating me anyway, so. Tell me something that will uh, intimidate, in, implicate somebody in a crime, that's what they asked me. So I told them what the crime was that I knew about, and that was that uh, uh, George Bush, Dick Cheney, Tennant, and Hayden conspired to subvert the Constitution, the constitutional process, and any number of laws, and here's how they did it, and I explained stellar wind on my back porch to all the FBI agents who weren't cleared. So they had a problem. Uh, I created a problem for them because they had a bunch of people now who weren't cleared for a very highly classified, only because it was domestic spying, by the way, was the reason it was highly classified. They, you know, they wanted to highly classify the extreme impeachable crimes that they were committing. It needs to be out in the open. We need to, as a democracy, we need to say, do we want our government doing this or not? And do we want our government to, to, to have this data or not? And if, if so, if we want them to have it, then what kind of controls? And they have to be a little bit more visible. It can't all be done in secret. You can't have secret interpretations of laws and, and run them in secret and not tell anybody. Or can't make up kill lists and not tell anybody what the criteria is for being in the kill list. This is something the KGB, the Stasi, or the Gestapo would have loved to have had about their populations. So, I mean, you know, and just because we call ourselves a democracy, right, doesn't mean we, can, we will stay that way. That's the real danger. And we, the people, may have absolutely nothing to say about it. We haven't had anything to say so far. <laughs>